What's up guys, it's Grandmaster Max here, and this video is going to be a bit different. I'm going to do a bit of a speed run, where I'm going to see how many games can I win in one hour playing unrated free minute on chess.com. So, let's do it. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can get more points on the new chess.com leagues. You're going to see this come up at the end of the game, where basically the more points you get, the more games you win, the more trophies you get. And the more trophies you get, the better your chance of qualifying for the uh, for the next league. Currently, I'm in the Bronze League, and I think I'm in second place. But the guy who's in first has some crazy 1,700 point score. So I'm basically using these games as a chance to try to catch him relatively quickly. And I can really see that my opponent's not playing this in the best way, and I think he's allowed me to play some nice tactics, or maybe not Bishop D3. But even though I haven't played this in the best way, because I've been introducing the video while talking. I still have a very comfortable position, and as you can see, I just won a pawn. Now, because I'm trying to win the game as quickly as possible, I'm not going to be explaining the moves all that much, unless, like, he is thinking for a long time and I don't have anything better to do. But anyway, it should be an entertaining video, and you guys will enjoy it. Do make sure to leave a like if you're liking the video, and especially if you're new to the channel, definitely consider subscribing. Actually, knight 3 probably wasn't the best move. Well, actually, it's fine. Queen H, I've got knight B4. I was really worried about this pin on my queen, but actually it's nothing, and I think he's kind of panicked. Yeah, you can see he's 1700, but I beat him pretty fast, and I clicked too quickly there, but basically it showed me getting 9 points in the bronze league, So, and I'm in position number 2. Uh, let's play knight f3, I'm going to go 2 knights. So basically, the right thing about this stream is that you're going to see how to beat these kind of players very quickly, because I'm going to be playing very tricky systems aimed at winning as quickly as possible. He didn't fall for the knight d6 trap, but you can see e6 is a very passive move that just gives me a great position. Castles I made on h7, so he sees that, at least for the moment. Knight d7, knight f6, let's go queen e2. I mean, this is going to be a bit of a longer game, but still we can attack. Knight e5 nod's not the best move because he can go c5, but I'm kind of gambling that a, he doesn't do that, or b, if he does, my position is still really good. Go like bishop f4. Rook AD1 and, you know, just bring the piece into the attack. C5 would be kind of interesting at some moment, but I'm going to kind of hold it for the moment just to see what he does. Uh, but yeah, I mean, naturally I want to bring the piece toward the attack on the king. And yeah, he's preparing C5, so maybe now's a good time to stop it. I'm going to take with the bishop and just go F4, F5 or something. He gets a nice outpost on the knight on D5, but it's actually not that great for him in reality. Because I can just play around it. Like even queen e4 now. Just provoking some weakness in the structure. Because otherwise queen h7 mate is going to be really nasty. But yeah this game's taking a bit long. I'm probably going to play a different opponent after this game I think. Because well he's just playing too well. Like I'm not beating him super fast. So yeah. Okay bishop e8. Yeah he's trying to bring the bishop back to defend or something. But I've got ideas like bishop to d6 or whatever. Or bishop c4. I mean, I'm not really going to win on the on the queen, king side here, well, unless I do some rook d3, rook g3, which actually could be a pretty decent idea. Okay, he's going queen g5, I'll go rook d3, continue my plan. And of course, just as I start recording, the rain is coming down. Hopefully you guys can't hear it too loudly. So, uh, anyway, bishop h5. Okay, I actually did not see... Well, I saw I could do it before, I just completely forgot about it. I can say the rain distracted me or something. Uh, some excuse. But okay. Position is still very good for me. It's just going to take a very long time to actually win it. Which okay, I guess I'll have to deal with. So he probably goes g5 or something here. Rook f7. Because it's also been a long time since I actually have talked during my game. So maybe also not used to doing this just yet. I'm tempted to take on d5. But I'm going to go b4 first. Because I can always take d5 whenever. And he can't really take it. Because I've got bishop takes e6 in that case. F4, uh, let's go rook b3. I'm changing my mind. I don't think I'm going to win on the king side, so let's create weaknesses on the queen side. Which, remember, is what I should have done to begin with, but I was hoping I could try to win quickly. But he defended it well. Uh, I could play pawn f3, but now let's just prepare b5. Frankly, I probably should have just played b5 immediately. Like, this one thing with playing these lower eight players over and over again is it can make you a bit lazy and a bit superficial. But since I'm not, like, playing serious chess anymore, like, yeah, I don't really care. Now we have 3g3, he hasn't got a queen g2 mate, so at the end of the day, once I get the bishop around, that pawn is just going to be a weakness uh, in this case. Or I can even just leave it there and just play b5 anyway. 
I'm probably going to end up winning this game on time because he's taking a long time over his moves. And the thing is, when you're trying to win as quickly as possible with these, uh, with these things, like, you know, getting nine points for each blitz win or nine trophies for each blitz win, well, it kind of makes sense that if you're playing players who are losing on time, then even if you played all your moves instantly, it still takes three minutes to get those nine points. Whereas if you are playing players who, you know, playing a lot more quickly, then yeah, it's obviously a different story and you can get, accumulate the points a lot faster. So anyway, he's taking a long time. He's hoping for some knight a2 trick. Let's go rook b3. I mean, I haven't played this game very well because he's now like still in the game. But okay, now he blunders the piece finally. And yeah, that's basically it. I can see I'm pre-moving as well just to get the game over and done with faster. Let's find a different opponent. Okay, 1100, that's someone who I can try to beat somewhat more quickly. They normally go E5 against me, but let's go Mora Gambit in this one. At least if he takes it. Then the Mora Gambit works really well against these quite low rate players because they're not really good at defending against this early sort of attack. You know, I'd go like E5 and try to rip things open. But first, let's get some more pieces into the game. Queen E2, Rook D1, E5. All pretty standard stuff for this line. And yeah, Queen C7. He's actually playing quite reasonably, but... Okay, I could still go Bishop G5 or Bishop E3. I think I'll choose E... F I really want to go F4. It's not the best move because he has E5, but I'm gambling that he's not going to do it. Or even if he does, I still have like Bishop G5. But yeah, now E5 and I can start to get some play going. Again, objectively, it's not that great because he had knight h5, but okay, he didn't see it. But now yeah, I'm starting to show that his queen is maybe a little bit misplaced on c7 for this reason. At least with the order that he played it. And as you can see, it's very systematic. Like, it's so easy to play, like, castles, queen e2, rook d1, e5, like, it just plays itself. Yeah, now b5 is just a blunder on actually quite a few levels, but I think knight b5 is going to be the most convincing one. And maybe I play bishop takes b5 and just win with this. Actually, I should have gone knight c6 first. Actually, no, knight c6 I would have been queen f4. So yeah, this is better. But actually, yeah, I was really worried he was going to play like bishop d7 or something. But maybe it didn't work. Okay, so I go knight c6. He has queen f4. But then I have knight a5 at the end and end up winning a piece. So if I go rook a c1, though, I kind of keep a bit more pressure. So, uh... Yeah, which one to do? I'll go knight c6 and just take the piece, even though it's probably not the most precise. But yeah, I try like I was playing extremely well yesterday. Like I was playing a bunch of four-player chess, and I gained so many rank points. I gained like 50 or more rank points in virtually every one of the five types of time controls for like solo and free-for-all. But today, yeah, not playing quite as well, I think. So anyway, yeah, and he resigned. Okay, that's nice. Because you resign quickly when you're only down to pawn, I'm happy to play you again. But maybe he doesn't want to play. So let's find a new opponent. What's his count so far? I've won three games and I started at 5.34. So, okay, it's been eight minutes winning three games. Quite a bit slower than my usual rate of, uh, of wins. So, uh, yeah. Like, I was really hoping to win... Okay, it's got a 2.290. Against players with a somewhat higher rating, I'm going to play, like, uh, the London. That's, like, my go-to system in these Blitz games. Because you just can play the move so quickly. And, well, you can see already, like, I've got a very nice... Attacking position. Bishop d6 is a good move on his part. I think I was going to keep the tension out to keep him guessing. I think it's going to go like knight c3, queen b3 is the general plan here. So, and queen b3 is kind of annoying when he played bishop d6 already. Because it's not so easy to defend it with a queen if he needs to defend this guy as such. So knight f6, queen b3. And uh, yeah, I mean b6 might be his best move. Okay, he just blundered the bishop, thanks. Kind of surprised that 2290 would blunder that fast, but okay, I actually beat him really quickly. So that's nice, that's four wins. Okay, uh, getting somewhat high rated players compared to usual. So okay, d4, knight f3. Do I go e4? Yeah, let's go e4 and bishop c4, just attack this way. The stuff I've generally had very good results with, actually. Like, in the few games I've lost with bishop c4, I've been completely winning out of the opening normally. So, yeah, this is quite a good system. It's queen e2, e5, and you kind of hit the knight. But it goes on f6. But if they don't play knight f6, their position's kind of not so great. I think d5 is what you're normally meant to do. Just gain a tempo on the knight. And we'll get this kind of king's Indian structure where they end up losing a bit of time moving the bishop around. In fact, they can already lose the bishop with knight f6 to f4, which would be quite nice to allow. I'm just going to bring the bishop back to e2. Maybe d3 was a better square, but oh well, I'm going to get this in anyway. 
C4, Knight C3. And again, it's probably going to be a long game just because it's a strategic sort of position. So uh, yeah, buckle in, guys. It's going to be a long ride. So yeah, as you can sort of see this video, I'm like kind of doing it more in a stream sort of style because I'm, after all, you know, playing these games and talking while playing them. Uh, 97 is a bit weird, but okay, I'll go F4, gain a tempo on the bishop, play knight c3, bishop e3, and it's a very harmonious position here. It's a much improved Benoni because he doesn't have the pawn on c5 to give him some space. Uh, yeah, and I mean, position does make a lot of sense, probably c6, like castle c6, f5 are going to be the kind of breaks that you normally go for as black, and you know, to be fair, he gets this and he's probably not in that bad of a position, but I'd still prefer to be white. Just go bishop. I mean, f5 against a low red player might just go for it, but I think this guy have a bit too much respect for to just play random hacking moves for the sake of it. I'm just going to beat him strategically. It'll take longer, but it's kind of just the best way to play the position. So not much else I can do about it, I think. If f5, maybe I'll just go bishop f3. And if takes, I take back with the knights and try to get into e6. Yeah, bishop e7, kind of happy to see that move. Because now c6 I might be able to take, and his d6 pawn is going to be a bit weak. So bishop f3, bishop f2, just consolidate. Bishop d4 is a lot smarter though to trade off the bishop. Yeah, now he goes f5, maybe now bishop d4 kind of makes sense. Because now his king is actually quite weak if I can get the queen and I can get the knight in and stuff. Really cool I can draw the arrows. I should have taken first. Now he's knight f5. That was very careless of me. Okay, but I can do this anyway. And maybe even set a little trap with g4, knight e3, queen d4. Let's see if he falls for that. Even if he doesn't fall for it, I think this is still a very good move because queen d4 is really quite embarrassing for the black king here. Knight h4, queen d4, king f7, knight g5, and okay, as king g8, he survives, but it still looks pretty rough for him. So, and then there are other moves I can also play after knight h4, queen d4, king f7, like even something simple like h3 still kind of leaves him quite short of play in that case because, you know, he doesn't have the rook on a8 in the play. Okay, what is this, uh, just take? I don't get his idea. Knight e3, queen d4, and he's dead. So, yeah, that's a pleasant surprise. <laughs> okay, queen h4, I'll take you. And then I'll go queen a Actually, I can even go rook c7 next move if I want to. He really has nothing, and now he blunders the queen. Huh, <laughs> that's funny. And okay, uh, well, this game, yeah, you spend a lot of time thinking, so I'm going to try and find a different opponent. But, yeah, getting a lot of high rate players on this one. So I guess those are, like, who, uh, watching, uh, I don't know, who are playing, like, mostly, let's say, 1,600, 2,000 players, and, yeah, this is probably the video for you, and if you're watching, like, already, like, 1,100, 1,200, probably, like, wow, how come these 2,000s are losing so quickly? But anyway, E3, uh, so, yeah, I'm playing the London once again, and, again, you see a lot of these guys, I like to play this C6 on Knight C6 rubbish, and the problem with C6 is just make my bishop an absolute monster on, uh, on F4, and it's going to much improve Slav, because, Normally in a normal Slav, like 2c4, c6, you don't get the bishop to f4 or even the g5 all that easily. But here you just get it completely for free. This is why the Slav is not so great in this version. I mean, even cd5 is really tempting at this point. I'm going to do it. I mean, it's probably not the best way to beat him really quickly, but it does at least open up the position and, you know, cd5, knight b5 traps would be quite nice. But, okay, he's too good for it and he sees it. So I'm going to play bishop d3. Because he's not going to get queen a5 and try to trade the queens. And I mean, it's a bad ending, but when the queens get traded, it means the game is going to go on for ages. So, yeah, no way doing a great job of being my opponents quickly, but maybe it's just because they're playing well today, relative to their rating. And yeah, now he's sinking for a while. Yeah, queen a5. I mean, I'm just going to play king f1 because I just don't want to trade the queens, but objectively, king queen e2 is, I think, the better move. But I want to kind of attack him in this sort of position. I'm going to go like knight f... Okay, g5 is very weakening. Okay, now he's giving me some actual, like, hope that I can beat him relatively quickly. I mean, I've got some ideas like h4, b4, knight f3, rook c1. Again, sort of why I like about these London sort of setups, just the positions really do play themselves as white. Even with not much time on the clock, you just play very natural, improving moves, and it's very easy to get a strong attack if they make a few little slips. So he's thinking for a long time. And if I was black here, I would probably, yeah, I probably would go bishop g7 and maybe knight f6 is what I'd do. But then you're still having knight f3, knight e5. It's still really bad. Okay, I'll go knight f3, as I said. <coughs> knight will go to e5. There's just a really great square for knight in these sort of London-type structures or Slav exchange-type structures. If he takes, I just go d5 and just gain a tempo on the bishop. Or 
in this case, he just has managed to really weaken his position. I mean, even if like e4 is very interesting here, just kind of opening up the center when his king's in the middle. And yeah, my king's not great on f1, but I can always shuffle it like this. And you know, it might actually be a good time to do it now. Just king g1, king h2. I was sacking a pawn there, but I think it was working out for me. He has knight d3, and yeah, I've I've misplayed this a little bit, but I'm still much better. I think queen, queen e2 is going to be the most precise to prepare rook d1 with a tempo. I think as long as his king doesn't isn't able to really get to safety, I'm pretty confident that this should be still pretty good for me. Okay, so I trade queens, but I'll just keep them on the board. I'm going to bring my bishop to g5, and the problem for him then is that he's just going to be very weak. But he's also got queen d5 all the time, which is super annoying. And I might want to do something about it. Maybe queen g5? Yeah, let's play queen g5. I'm sacking a pawn, but yeah, I'm gambling that he doesn't see queen to e2. And even if he does... Well, actually, it's just a very annoying move, queen to e2. But yeah, he's taking ages on his move, which probably should do because it's quite difficult. And yeah, my prediction was correct. He doesn't see the important queen e2 idea to attack this. So now I think it should be winning once I get the queen and the rook in the attack. Yeah, if you guys can hear background noise, because like there's this party going on like in uh, in my household. But I said, nah, let's uh, let's play some blitz instead. Uh, rookie one was sloppy. I like queen f5. But okay, I have queen to g7, I think, so it's still fine. As long as I'm not allowed blundering some mate, it should be all good. I can bring the rook. Okay, now we just blundered, uh, blunder rook on a8, right? I think I can just take it. And I'm threatening queen d8, mate, so it's going to be over soon. But the game did take a long time to actually win. Probably a combination of, like, him kind of defending fairly well in a bad position and me basically, like, yeah, just uh, playing, like, cd5. It's going to just make it a long game when you don't have that tension between the pawns. But okay, let's find a new opponent. Uh, this guy is going to take too long to beat. So we're at, we're at like five wins and it's already been 20 minutes. So yeah, this really, uh, may take a long time to win for some reason. But okay, this d5, 9, 6 line often get quick wins against these kind of players. So it gives me some hope. But in fact, he played knight c3 suggests he's a quite solid player. Okay, knight e2 though is kind of weird. Let's go knight b4 and hope he blunders knight d3, mate. That would be funny. But okay, knight before. Oh wow, he did blunder, mate. Huh, finally a quick win. Okay, let's see who else. So that's six wins, I believe. I already lost count, but I think it's six. We go d4. Don't know why I'm playing London against a 1400, but okay, now I'll go c4. And change my mind a bit. Knight c3, queen b3, and you know, all the good stuff. Queen b3. e3 is objectively a better move, but yeah, he plays bishop c3 because he doesn't know what he's doing. And I just get this massive advantage with the bishop pair. I don't want to trade the queens because I'll win more quickly if I can sensibly keep the queens on the board for a while. For queen a5, I just go bishop d2, queen e4, probably just e3. I can even play a move like g3, actually. I'm going to do that and hope he sort of blunders something here, is what I'm kind of going for. Uh, knight d4, I take, take, and then I have bishop b2 to attack the queen and then go for it. But okay, rook d8 is a good move. Knight f6. I mean, I'm much better, but it's going to take some time to actually win this, unless he... Makes a very big blunder in the next move or two. Okay, bishop b4. Yeah, again, he's playing good moves. Like, not much you can do if they're playing well. So, takes. I'll go queen takes and hope he doesn't see this. But I would probably go queen f3 anyway, in all fairness. But okay, now I can go like d5 and just rip open the position. Knight a5 is probably maybe a reason why it might have been better to put the bishop on here. But okay, knight e7, just go d5, just hack him for bits. And if ed5, I can then go bishop f6. This is the, the point. That now he is very exposed. And and yeah, I think in this case, like if it was an over the board game, I'd go cd5. But I'm going to take one f6 against this guy because I want to try and mate him quickly. Something like this. So yeah, he might go queen e6, queen g5, queen g6 and just give up a pawn just to spite me. Except it doesn't even work because so I just take e7. The queen g5 check and I win a pawn. And okay, the plan is like h4, h5 will bring some nice attack going. Okay, he trades the queens, but I'm going to let him do it, despite what I said before. Because it improves my structure quite a bit to put these guys in place. And the plan of like e4, e5, f4 is just so easy to execute. I can even go rook c1 and try to hit this guy, but yeah, he forgot on passant. So, bad luck. I swear I wasn't cheating. So, okay, rook c8, I'll go rook d6. Just anticipating 95 or 97 attacking that way. 
I can go f4, e4, e5 still, and he still doesn't really have much to do. So, yeah, he knew resigns. Okay, because he resigned kind of early, I'm going to play him again. Because that game was done in like three minutes. Which is, yeah. Okay, he doesn't want to play again. Yeah, you can see I'm now up to like 2, 1, 2, 9, 6. Okay, b3. He wants this to be a long game. But I'm not going to oblige. Okay, this 97 is like a kind of modern pawn sack idea. Where the idea is that, well, if bishop b5, I was going to go a6. But now... Okay, now it's an interesting question. I might go queen d6, actually. Because I'm hoping that he's just going to take voluntarily and sort of, in a way, resolve the tension for me. Okay, castle's like, h5 is not the best move, but I'm going to do it because I just want to attack him. Yeah, for h4, just... This is what I'm doing against relatively, like, higher-rated players. Again, I might just play, like, h5, h4, h3 in some positions. Just to kind of weaken their king in the long term. So I find they often don't deal with this very well. So h3, and we'll see what happens from there. And yeah, you can see he blundered hg2, which already is kind of bad news for him. Because the pawn is just kind of in his face. And I could even play bishop h3 if I want to play it really dynamic. Uh, I mean, d4 is probably the best move. So let's just play that. And again, not be afraid of the end game. Though he can play take, take, knight, c4. Okay, this is not the best move. Because now I get a tempo on the bishop and I get time to go bishop h3 and to keep my monster pawn on g2. So now I think it should just be winning with best play. Bishop h3. He can try to get the knight to win this pawn, but it's going to take a long time to get to a decent square. Uh, which way will I play it? My pawn's under attack, so I might want to defend it with f5. Because I play d5, he has knight d5, bishop c6 tricks because of the pin, which is really quite annoying. So I want to avoid that. In fact, he could have gone knight d5 anyway, but he decides not to yet. I think if I get my king to c7, I'd be fairly safe. But yeah, he's playing some annoying moves. I could go rook h6. I might defend that way. Is a little more harmonious, I think. Because the rook wasn't doing that much on h8 beforehand. So yeah, he goes knight d5. I really wish there was some kind of tactic, but I think I just have to settle for takes king c7. And just improve the position organically. I can maybe go d5 next move, just trade off the bishop. And if rook a5 is rook is kind of short of squares, which is good news for me. So, let's see what else we have here. Uh, so here, go back. Just check to make sure my video hasn't been dead this whole time, because that would have been really embarrassing, but fortunately it's all good. And he's sinking for a long time for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Probably he's considering whether to go rook a5, rook here, or whether to resign. But it's probably a bit too early for him to resign, even though he is losing. I mean, just look at how bad his bishop on a4 is. Like, it'll be taking a very long time before that bishop has any meaningful function in this game. Yeah, when I think for a long time, something did they lose connection, but... Okay, d5. d5 is probably a little bit careless, but I think it's still fine. Because if the position does open up later, I can sort of go rook d8 and try to mate him like this. So he goes bishop b2, which is a mistake, because bishop c5, and... He shouldn't end up losing the exchange, because allowing me to take on e3 by moving the rook would be even worse again. But he just let me do that. So bishop g7, rook g6. Okay, gives a random check. Doesn't really change too much. If I want to troll him, I could even play something like rook takes e5, f4, and just kind of mess with him like that. But I think I'm just going to beat him more quickly instead. Well, at least as long as he lets me, because he's, uh, or as quickly as he lets me, because, yeah, he's taking a bit of time. So c4, let's keep the tension, rook d8, and take back with the rook, just trade stuff. Because the more pieces get traded, the more this pin is a problem for him. Okay, let's go rook d6, just preparing this sort of thing. Bishop f6 just blunders a bishop. And I mean, if an engine was on at this point, it would probably say forced mate in however many moves, but I don't know how many exactly. But he can't really stop this pawn at the very least. And yeah, he finally resigns, but yeah, guy takes too long to beat, so I'm going to find someone else to play. Sometimes, like, I do this seek and end up playing the same person again anyway, which is kind of awkward, but... Okay, so that's like the seventh win, I think. The seventh for the eighth win. I mean, I'll count it afterwards. I was going to... Oh, wow, I end up playing like a... Guy like higher rated than me in unrated game. That's kind of funny. Okay, in that case, I'm just going to go for my sort of like old system I used to play. Like Accelerated Dragon, I remember having very good results with back in... Uh, when was it? Like back in uh, 2018, 2019, when I was playing a lot of Blitz. I had pretty good results with these kind of systems. So yeah, it's Accelerated B5 is like a little bit of a wrinkle. Where you basically like it getting in this very fast play. I mean, H5 would be kind of fun, but I think I'm going to just play it normally. And not uh, overcomplicate things. Knight d5. I can just go knight d7 and I can kick him away like that. Yeah, let's go b6. 
So yeah, even though I'm playing a guy who like is higher rated than me apparently, I still think I might actually get a much better position out of the opening. Probably goes b3 to shut out the knight, but okay, then I can go b4 and get a bishop out, and you now my pieces are just a lot more active than his. So bishop a6. In terms of the plan, I think I was going to play down the c-file maybe. I'm going to defend this, play rook c8, and should be good. Okay, so now, uh, now I think I actually want to play knight d7 back, because that kind of makes this knight look a little bit silly on this square. So that's my thinking. Bishop h6, I can always go bishop h8. But now it's up to me to find some sort of plan in this position, and maybe knight c5 could be an idea. I'm going to play a waiting move, bishop b5 first, and maybe now knight c5 is what I'm going to do. And, well, I really want to try to get something in the center somehow. Uh, let's see how I might do it. Maybe queen e7. Yeah, queen e7 looks like good preparation. Just prepare queen h4. But yeah, he's playing really fast, but he's not really playing very good moves, I think. So if I just bring the knight back again, uh, I could do that. Okay, I'm just going to bring the knight back because I don't think he really has a constructive plan anyway. If I just keep this and maybe just go for rook a2 or something could be an idea. But yeah, position is sort of more resilient than I thought. But f5 is the kind of move I'm happy to see. Because that gives me a really nice outpost on e5. And g5, yeah, he's really going for the attack. But if I just play something like queen c7, I don't really see f6 really leading to mate. Because now like the center is really stable. He can't really get the queen h6. And yeah, if h4, I was going to go like knight g4. So he's trying to attack here. I mean, do I just play bishop to e8? Which really looks kind of weird though, but... Okay, I guess it does keep the pawn defended, so... I'll put it on c6, actually. I'm going to change plan a little bit and go for d5 in some position. Uh, so, or I could put a bishop on a8. Yeah, that's how I'm going to do it, because I want to attack this way, I think. I can tell I'm not playing the position very well. I can tell I'm very rusty at this point. But, you know, we, we work with what we got. Like, go knight c6, d5. Okay, rook b4 is kind of surprising to me, but okay. Ah, he's going rook c1. Yeah, and he ends up winning the queen, but I actually think I get kind of decent compensation there. But of course, this is what he should have done. Okay, now I'll go queen. I could go queen c3, actually. Does that just win material? Yeah, I think that just wins a pawn. So that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't mean my bishop is kind of stuck still, but okay, I do need to play a little bit faster around this point. So I think he probably goes bishop f2 or knight f1 or something, but either way, I take b3 and I think I have pretty good winning chances there. I could even go like h6 maybe and try to show he's a bit overextended potentially. So, okay, let's see what he does. If he goes king f2, I probably just go rook b3 anyway, just keep taking the pawn. And yeah, rook a2, let's go rook b8. And I'm going to probably rewrite my bishop to c6 or something. Because my bishop at the moment is not doing all that much. So rook a7 might look scary, but I don't think it really has a threat. So I think I can... Okay, he's going knight e2, knight d4. Let's just harass him a little bit on this end. Okay, h4. Well, now I fix it as a weakness at least. Uh, let's go rook a8. Just, uh, so he's probably going to go rook c7, but that gives me some options as well. I can even play like bishop to... I'm thinking bishop b5 for some reason. I want to go bishop d3 and try to attack him like this from the back. The other thing is like my position is a little bit passive, but you know, if I can organize my pieces well, I think I'm in pretty good shape. I'll go knight c4, just defend like this. And I can go knight d2 and try to attack this maybe. That's sort of what I'm thinking. Okay, h5 is kind of weird, but I'll just take it. It strikes me very... Ah, oh, he wants to go g6. But is that really doing anything? I mean, I guess he can meet knight e6 with e5 ideas, but... If I just go knight e5, I think I just keep control here pretty well. Or at the very least, I'm not in danger, except the fact that I'm rather low on time, which kind of sucks. But anyway, I guess... Well, I should think like what my next move is be like, maybe bring the bishop to g4 or something can be a good way to defend. Because I think if I get my knight on... Okay, so he's trying to attack like this, but... Okay, I could go just takes. It looks like just a bluff, right? I think he's just bluffing me. I'm just taking heaps of pawns and life is good. Okay, knight d4, but I can just go knight g4 even, and I don't really see how he follows up the attack successfully. Probably his best bet was to play knight f8 and just try to liquidate or something. Or like knight e6 back again at this point perhaps. Could be an idea and yeah that's what he does. Okay but now I'm kind of getting flagged which is not nice. 
So I might just have to stop talking and just play really fast. Okay, he does this. Okay, I need to speed up. Speed up, bro. Oh, he's going for this. Yeah, I'm not playing this very well, but what to do? Not much time on the clock. Okay, now I need to bring out the pre-moves. Yeah, that's one thing I haven't got rusty on is how to pre-move. Okay, now I'm just gonna go dirty flag. Wow, I only just won that. I can see like it took another six minutes. So yeah, it's nice to beat a high rate player. But yeah, this was, wow, 13 blunders. That's uh, that's really crazy. I think it's because of like the end of the game, like the piece was on pre all the time. So I guess that's where most were. But I know this was not my best game at all. But I managed to win it at least. So okay, let's go back to where we were. It's kind of ironic. Like I wrote speed run, but I win so many more games. So I don't write speed run in the title. So that's kind of funny. What is this G4 rubbish? It's H5 and just hacking the bits. And yeah, now he just blunders a pawn. <coughs> I'm a very serious attempt. Now I'm just up a pawn and I have a much safer king side. And, you know, I can just go bishop e7, long castle, rookie h8. Position kind of plays itself, really. He's just letting me play d4. I guess so. I mean, I can go knight a5. And that's maybe what I should be doing here. Just to pick up the queen or to pick up the knight. Because always the pressure here would actually be kind of annoying. But now I'm in time to play like bishop d6 and to keep things defended. Actually, I might take with an e-pawn maybe. Nah, no, c-pawn I'll take with uh, if he goes for that. Okay, let's just hit his queen, gain a tempo there. Queen b2, maybe knight e4, just force and favorable exchange. Because if he takes, it helps activate my bishop for the attack. And then from this point, maybe the plan is just to play like a5. I was originally going to cast along, but I kind of feel like my king... Is actually fairly safe in the center. And maybe that's from playing way too much four player chess. But yeah, that's what it is. And actually, a5 is kind of useful because now I have the bishop b4. And whoops, that goes your queen. So uh, yeah, I think he's probably going to resign fairly soon at this point. And we can move on to the next game. Or not. He's going to play on a queen down. Okay. You do you. Actually, b5 is kind of silly, but it's fine. I want to open up the position take and you know quick king e7 or whatever it's not like he really has anything at this point yeah just take probably queen b5 or something c6 queen b4 and i mean he has nothing but yeah that's kind of the secret like if i'm doing one of these speed runs if you want me to play a lot of times just like play quickly and resign early and i'll probably play you over and over because i get a lot more points for the league but if you play on for ages and i'm probably not going to play you again so uh okay let's just finish this against mr i never resign actually might go king h4 ah but i can threaten mate but goes king h3 and okay now i'm just going to troll him with this and queen g3 mate it's probably gonna go e3 to mess with me yeah mate next move we finally get there and this game was what, like, well, it depends on how long he delays here. But, yeah, basically, it should be, no like, just a three-minute game. Like, took three minutes. But because he's refusing to resign, drag time out, yeah, it uh, takes a bit longer. I'll play him again just because, yeah, I want to see. Because, I mean, there were some other games I played that were a bit sh faster. But, yeah, taking forever to get points today. Because normally, I, like, I've had runs where I get, like, 200 points or 200 trophies. But I, I keep getting these players who are, like, somewhat... Like higher rate, high rated, like let's say 1800 plus, and B, like they're sort of taking a lot of time on their moves, so it is taking a long time for me to get points at this moment. But 1960 yeah, are not one of the main moves because I can just take, and I guess it can go D5, but yeah, this structure is very, very nice for white. I can just go even normally just play F3 and just H4, H5, but I'm even wondering if I can go F4 and just be more ambitious here. And yeah, I mean, I don't really care if I get up the bishop pair because he's still very far behind in development. Uh, so knight f6. Actually, he gets in knight f6 and castles. His position is not really that bad. 
So I might want to do something about it, like bishop d4. It's actually is a very tricky move, because now I have a fork on the bishop and rook, and yeah, it's tricks like this that can allow you to win very quickly against these guys, where they just take without thinking and suddenly they realize they lost. So yeah, now I win, and I mean, normally speaking, like, they would just resign, and you know, you get a whole ton of, like, points, like, you get nine trebies super fast, and move on to the next one, but okay, he wants to play on a piece down, so... I mean, to be fair, like, if I was in his shoes, I would do the same thing if the position were reversed, because I'm also very stubborn like that, but... Okay, I guess because I'm playing, like, players who are sort of mostly a lot lower rated, like, I know even if I'm down a piece, there's still a good chance I can probably swindle them later. Like, it's happened to quite a few times, and yeah, now he just blunders the queen. And hopefully that's going to be what makes him resign. Fingers crossed. Okay, so... Let's find a different opponent. Okay, 1200. That gives me some hope. This premium knight f6, because why not? I, mean, I don't really hate the Alucan that much in Blitz. It's not like they are going to be that well prepared for it. And sometimes they just go knight c3 and yeah, just let you transfer his back to a good e4, e5, which is a nice little move order trick. Probably should have gone knight e4, but okay, I'm copying Carlson. That's my excuse. But okay, now I get the fork trick. You know, knight e4, d5, all that good stuff to get the piece back. And okay, this line, yeah, it's sort of tricky, but I think the queen g5, well, I thought he was going to play knight e5 and just keep the pin, but okay, queen g5, let's go for an attack, and I mean, already this position is just very, very bad for white. So, let's see what he does, like d4, knight c6, nothing really works for him, though. The point you're going to see is I'm also going to get in bishop h3 after rook f1, so he basically ends up losing even more material uh, as such. So, okay, I get at least the exchange. I can try to see if I can do better, but at some point I'm probably going to take... Of course, I completely missed the bishop g4 won the queen, but okay, I take the second chance. And now it works even better because he doesn't even have f3 as a defense. So yeah, it takes, and okay, hopefully the guy will just lay down and die, realize that the time's up. But he's probably going to play on till mate. So, uh, yeah, if king e1, I have a funny queen h1. Okay, you resign quickly, so I'll play you again. And we'll see, uh, we'll see what's next. Okay, maybe he doesn't want to play, so let's find another opponent. Yeah, you can see my rating is, like, really low, like, 2 8 3 one I had, like, some dumb loss where I hadn't played in a while, so I was, like, 16 points. Which I had a completely dead one position on move 16, and I just completely self-destruct. It's very embarrassing, which is why I'm not showing you that game, but instead playing these. And again, playing London System. Don't know why I played Lancet against a 1200, because I probably would win more quickly if I'd gone e4, but it is what it is. And I, uh, yeah, let's see, uh, see what comes next. So bishop f5, and hopefully he blunders some knight before queen a4, but okay, he's too good for that. So knight c3, just going to play like a normal queen's gambit, where the bishop on uh, the knight on c6 isn't really very well placed. But yeah, now he just blundered a pawn, which is very generous of him. I'll, I'll kindly accept the gift. And, uh, yeah, I think he probably is kicking himself a little bit for that. I mean, it's playing normal. He's like knight free bishop d3 castles. And, you know, I got a pretty strong center in that case. Okay, he's castling long. Okay, yeah, I want to be a bit careful of knight d4. So let's just stop that. And we have an end game, meaning the game will just go on for ages. Okay, so let's go rook c1, b4, b5. I'm going to hack his king even without the queens. Like, who needs queens to attack? Knight h5. Give me some weaknesses for free. That's quite kind of him. Let's see what else we have here. So yeah, now he's sinking for a bit. Okay, I'm just going to put another knight on the edge because while well, I'm a grandmaster, I can break the opening principles. Okay, so now he's giving me a pawn with check. If I'm lucky, he's going to give me a second one for free as well. But okay, I'm just going to be two pawns up instead. And fortunately, I'm not having to worry about knight d4, rook d4 because I got king e3 at the end there. I'm going to play rook to... Interesting question. Actually, let's just take the bishop, just so I'm not having to worry about it for the rest of the game. H3, because the pawn was under attack. Well, technically, I was trapping a rook with bishop h3, but let's not give him any counterplay. G5, knight e6, a nice little trick that he may well fall for. But, I mean, yeah, position is very, very easy for white. You know, up two pawns. Even if I wasn't up two pawns, like, let's say I had pawns on e6 and... H7, like, still the position is just so nice for me. Like, I've got his sort of position in the Catalan with G3, where you sort of think carry the bishop and just expand on the queen side. So it's H4, just defend the knight. 
96 G3 keeps airing well defended. Built a nice little pawn chain like that. So G3 and yeah, B4 and B5 is the plan. Go good old minority attack. So that's always nice. You know, you're up three pawns. They have no counterplay, but he is taking a long time to play his move. So this is probably why I regret a little bit playing the move uh, 1D4 against him because it's going to take longer in the game to beat him. Uh, we have a more strategic type of position and could see a bit more close like this as well. So knight b4, I'm just going a3 because I'm lazy. I do see that he has knight d5 and he sees it as well, but okay, the pawn's on the way. The saints come marching in. Could go a5, a6, create some weaknesses there. And then just somehow win on the king side with all my extra pawns that I've accumulated. I can also just build up an attack on this pawn as well. Also is a good plan. So yeah, I'll go a5, continue to plan, rook c5. Okay, it's going c6, let's just rip it open. Actually, a6 is not the most precise because I'm sucking a pawn, but oh well, I'm still up material and still winning anyway. So uh, yeah, cb5, full take, king takes, a b7, king b7, and wish I had something good with a pin there, but unfortunately I don't. And I've given him some, okay, fortunately for me, he just blunders. Well, not very really blunders, but he missed a chance to grab a pawn. And if CB5, yeah, I can sort of take and stuff. So I'll go Rook A4 and, yeah, just leave his Knight Vanny real good squares to go to. Knight D5 is going to take. And, I mean, there's not really much to say about this game because I think that if you're in my shoes, you would probably beat me if you were playing as white. Getting a position is just so trivial. You know, you just trade pieces, you push your past pawns, you get your Knight in a position, and, yeah, it's just nothing black can do. I mean, it's it's just too easy. Yeah, maybe it's just because his connection is, like, really bad. So, like, he can't get the time to find the resign button. Maybe this is what's happening to him. You know, it's time, like, when you have, you have too little time to resign. It's kind of like how the old joke goes. King c7. Yeah, he's just going to play on the flag. So, you're going to do that. And I'm not going to play you again. Yeah, <laughs> I win. So, yeah, I can play rook a5. Attack this pawn. Attack it with some other pieces as well. Looks pretty good. Let's find a different opponent. So we only have eight minutes left ah, to win as many games as I can. Yeah, it's been really, really slow. Like, I think I'm only at, like, maybe ten games if I'm lucky at this point. Yeah, another guy playing Bush Knight C6, which is a strategic mistake. You need to have the pawn on C5 to try to push. But, okay, we get normal trigger in. Good for white. Bishop B4. Okay, this is a concession. He's just giving me a tempo for free for development. Which means I can now castle after bishop b4. Yeah, you can see like these guys, like they just exchange without thinking this is a common weakness of these players. And the result is that now I just have the bishop pair strong center. Like erring about my position is great. Well, unless he goes like g5, h5. That actually could be a little bit double-edged for me. But I feel like it's still good for white. But yeah, it's a good thing that my move here attacks this pawn. I'm going to play h3 just to try to deal with g5, g4. But in some ways also makes it better. So let's just retreat the bishop, anticipate g5, and uh, maybe rook fd1 is a nice move, and I could try to kick the knight back. Of course, I'm completely missing knight a5, because I always knew I had to move queen a4 beforehand, but now I don't have it, because he already castled, so it's not a check. So I kind of lost my bishop pair like an idiot, but fortunately my position is still better. Still got the pressure here, and yeah, I can still push my pawns forward, which is nice. So... Still all good. Might go knight d2 first, prepare e4, just to grab some space in the center. But yeah, this game's again taking a long time. Like, I don't know why it's taking so long for you to beat these players. It feels like something's kind of wrong here. Okay, so c4. Maybe he wants to go e5. Yeah, it's actually a pretty decent idea on his part. But okay, I'll go c5. I'll grab some space. Forces knight to a dodgy square. Rook b1. Rook b1's kind of careless. I'm letting him go e5, which is probably not ideal. And yeah, now it's not even so clear I'm really better, but okay, I can take, I guess. That at least makes sure I don't lose a pawn, but now his position is kind of okay. Because uh, his bishop can come out and have these isolated pawns, so yeah, really playing very badly today. Okay, knight c6, just defend. f5, I've got queen c4 at least. That allows me to keep some level of control of the position. Um, in fact, it's an interesting question what to do after king h8. Because yeah, his bishop is sort of getting active no matter what I do, I think. As I play e5, but I don't think that's really worth it. I think I just have to take and... Well, except I'm not really better anymore in this position. Uh, so, very frustrating to you know, play like an idiot in these games. 
Okay, so here. I mean, my position is still better, but it's... Well, now it's definitely a lot better, because he traded bad bishop, and I've got some good pressure. Um, maybe I'll go rook d3 first. So I go rook d7, I see he goes rook e1, and that's kind of annoying. So I'm just going to prepare it like this, and keep the pressure that way. Because he can't really defend his pawn anymore, which is very useful. And yeah, just b4 keeps things under control for me. So uh, I'm going to take with the bishop... And the reason is that the rook and bishop don't coordinate better than the bishop and knight. You can't see these guys are a bit discombobulated here. But now, I mean, if you take this, like, the knight just doesn't really coordinate as well. And, you know, I already have, like, bishop e5. And that just shows you how well the bishop and rook coordinate in these kind of open positions. I was going to take on b7, but g4 is actually a lot better. Because I don't just win the pawn, but I just have some pretty nice windmills also. Which, as we can see, he has fallen into. Then he is getting the exchange back, but yeah, it's not enough, and he resigns. Yeah, you can see his game took like nearly four minutes, or actually maybe close to three, but okay, let's play Alikin once again. Let's go d5 this time, and I'm going to play knight f d7, head it towards uh, French defense, e6, c5. So I'm going to go c5 before e6, but this is kind of the better way to play it. And you can sort of see this e5 pawn is quite vulnerable, because he hasn't managed to defend it with pawn f4 earlier. Which is what he should have done on move 5. Then the results are just get a very nice position. You know, I can even play like castles f6 and just very, very happy. And again, you see he's playing this bishop for knight trade that really is not a great idea in this position. And also e f6 is also a mistake. He's helping my queen get more active for free. And I can even go like e5, e4 in some positions. Maybe not right away because it's going to be some knight d5 tactic. And he's going to try and hit my king and my queen in that case. But okay, maybe that's a reason to play queen f7. Yeah, I'll play queen f7 so that he's not going for this later. i try to cover it with the queen. And yeah, you can see, even though he's playing normal developing moves, he's got a very bad position because he made some bad exchanges. And that's often how he can beat these guys who are at like 1600 or below 1600. So let's see what he comes up with to deal with the threat of pawn e4, which is a fork that threatens to win a piece. But the problem is if he moves the knight, I can potentially take on 8 f2 at some moment. Maybe not immediately, because I don't think I want to pin my own uh, piece. But, you know, I can play e4 and definitely put his queen on a somewhat awkward square. Well, actually, to be fair, tree is not that awkward. But he should have played queen e2, because now I have bishop a6. And if the rook moves, I've got bishop takes f2. And for that reason, I'm basically just winning an exchange at this point. But yeah, it's already 622, so this is probably going to be the last game I get to in to actually win as such so i uh, yeah what is the count maybe i can check do i wait check it i'm gonna wait have to wait till after the game finishes i can check it after that i'm gonna actually keep the bishop just hoping that he kind of blunders something bigger if i do that because it's kind of a nice bishop to keep on the board i think so good need is hitting this pawn and doesn't have any real barriers i like, call like the sniper from afar we've got him like this but yeah i do kind of wish he would just resign Although I guess like he's only down in exchange if he just lets me take it. So But I mean the exchange down is enough to to lose basically against our competent opposition for the most part. So here I mean I'll take I will take with the pawn. That activates my rook. If he sees that he'll go king takes. But yeah, I still um I'm gonna go knight e five actually. Because he can't take because I've got queen here and you know I can go knight g four and try to pressure that way. And yeah, he responds by blundering the bishop. Okay, now he's going to resign, right? Okay, so he resigned, and yeah, we can see that I only gained like 120-something points from uh, from this session, I think. So, yeah, I definitely didn't win anywhere near as many games as I thought I would. And I don't think it's because I was commenting while playing. Because, like, last time I did these sort of streams where, like, playing while and I moved at the same time, like, I was just winning, uh, you know, winning a lot of games. Like, I was actually winning a lot more and winning more convincingly. But okay, if we take this amount, like, who was the first guy I played? I think Wild Wolf was the first one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Wild Wolf was the first opponent I had. Uh, so, the archive just did something weird on me, but I think now it's fine. Okay, so if we count the number of games... Uh, I have this weird glitch happening where I scroll down and it just goes all the way down. So, uh, okay, so if I go back... Okay, finally the glitch stopped. So, if I... No, don't do that. When I scroll down here, it just immediately goes all the way down. Okay, so this guy was the first one I played. I remember that from looking down. So I had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, 16 wins in one hour. 
For me, like a good number would be more like probably 20 wins in an hour. So okay, I think it's a bit below average, but still not too bad in fact. And actually I just realized that when checking the time, actually I started, yeah, it's at 6.34, not 6.5.34, not 5.24. So actually I have 10 minutes to boost that up a bit. So let's go. Let's play a few more before we finish. Oh, at least I remember what the count is now after dealing with this annoying glitch. Okay, so E4. Okay, Karak Khan, let's go. Let's actually exchange, just open up the position. There's something I haven't really played much against these guys, but I think opening up the position early is probably going to help me win a bit more quickly in principle, uh, at least if they don't play that well. And I could common mistake at this level is to play DC4 and help me develop the bishop for free, but because he's thinking he's probably going to play a better move, like E6. Knight F3, I'm probably just going to play this after most moves. So CD5. Knight D5, we go Bishop D2, but yeah, ED5 just wants to play very solid, very boring kind of chess. So Bishop G4, Castle. I mean, it's not really a lot I can do in this position, actually. Just very, very dry. Which means it's probably going to be another really long game. Which is kind of frustrating. It's almost like these guys like know that I'm only playing these games in order to like win the, you know, win the sort of bronze league that I'm in. And so they're saying, well, I'm just going to play... Well, I'm going to lose, but it's going to be really slow and really painful for both of us. So, knight c6, I might actually go knight e2, because I want to go bishop g5 and pin the knight. That's what I'm thinking at the moment. And yeah, I'm also really excited also, because the one game I finish with, I will have a really nice sushi dinner I can enjoy, like homemade sushi. So, that's going to be good to eat. And the guy, yeah, it's taking a long time to his moves, so I don't think I'm going to play him again. Because I was like going to be here forever and I'll have like two more wins to my name for playing such high quality chess. So my threat's queen f5, bishop f6, queen h7 mate basically. That's what I'm going for. Probably yeah, bishop f6 first is like another way to do it. But okay, let's play the plan. Up and now he has queen f5, knight e7. Okay, so I'm just going to take and luckily for me he blunders queen f5 and yeah, he's just getting completely murdered after this. He has to go like rook e8 or some other rook move so this king can at least move to f8 but he's still getting completely owned after rook fe1 and okay he actually resigned early but he was taking too long his move so I'm going to try and find a new opponent who I can maybe beat a bit more quickly. Yes, yeah these games are taking a long time. Okay so getting an 1800. I remember I had some runs before like where I would get some like 1200 I could just play him over and over again. That's why I was getting points really quickly but it doesn't really seem to be happening today. And yeah, let's me get transferred to a good Pirates uh, system, like after d6. I'm gonna go bishop e3. This way Napomnish he likes to play like long castle, bishop h6, and just hack their king. So let's do that. I don't think he's gonna be that good at defending against it. Knight g4, probably just bishop g5, and the knight kinda of looks silly on g4. Alright, let's just attack. I don't care. Probably in a long game I'd go h3 and be more solid, but I just want to attack his king now. So I'll go bishop d3, just defend this pawn in advance. Because I was just threatening to take, take, go knight e4 and use the pin on my knight. So bishop d3 just covers that really well. Man, that food smells so good. I mean, I don't know, like, if you guys are like me, like, you watch YouTube and, like, you have some snack to enjoy while watching some game or whatever. I kind of like doing that sort of thing. So, yeah, kind of relate. So if b4, I just go knight e2 and the knight's still safe. And again, it shows a nice point about playing bishop d3 that it keeps that nice harmonious step where my knight's not shutting in a bishop on f1 for example and I keep my center defended which is quite important when playing against these hyper one systems like the Pirates. I think the television is on so the auto quality is really crap that's probably why but I can't really do much about it. I am in a game doing a speed run and my opponent is having a long thing to stop my speed run. I mean next time maybe I should just like do it as a live stream on YouTube or Twitch just say yeah, you know I'm doing a speedrun, so yeah, go ahead and wait for like three minutes to make your move or something. It can be like a sort of meme or whatever. A is kind of a rubbish move, but I'm just kind of annoyed at this point. Which means his plan kind of works to, to annoy me. Okay, let's go A3 because I don't care. But yeah, now my position's not good, like 97, E5, and I don't even know why I did what I did before. And B4 is crazy. I'm playing so badly this game. Okay, I'm sort of laying him get under my skin, which I shouldn't really do. And now c5. Okay, but now maybe I can go here in e5 and I actually have some real attack now after this. Because I have rook h5. That's a good one for, uh, what's it called, for puzzle rush. Queen g5. 
Queen h6, Knight h3, 5, and I'm pretty sure it's just mate somehow. Now I'm going to play Knight g5, is kind of showing off a little bit. Because Rook g8, I've got Knight f7, mate. This is a, a nice little point. But otherwise, I can just take h7 and mate that way. And yeah, he blunders the mate. Okay, at least that was over quickly in terms of moves, but yeah, he thought a long time. So I have, what, five minutes left to try to win, let's say, two games, because I doubt I'm going to win more than two. And if these guys take forever to make their moves, I'm definitely going to win more than one in the time. Why do I play London? I keep playing London against these guys, but I should really just play, like, you know, 1e4. That way I win much faster. But okay, I can go queen b3 and try to be annoying like this. And hope, you know, he doesn't defend this very well. Because even though queen b6, c5 is an endgame, it is one that's, like, pretty uh, pretty easy to play fast and to win with. But yeah, this line is like, even though it's not good for black, it's kind of solid. It takes a long time to actually finish him off in these sort of positions. Because uh, it's just a lot more positional. And there is one idea that I can use that I've actually done in some games in the past where it would have worked quite well. It's where you take the bishop and then you just charge the pawns and hack. That's probably what I'm going to do once he castles. So here, let's go h4 and just attack the king. It's sort of planned probably objectively isn't that great, but it seems to work really well in blitz. So, not sure what he should really do about it, to be honest. I mean, probably should try to, like, maybe go bishop d8 to c7. But yeah, knight 5 kind of is what I want to see. Because just giving me a tempo for the g4 attack. And if you take on h4, your bishop is going to get kind of trapped in after that. So, yeah, he goes this instead for some weird reason. Uh, take with the queen. Could have taken with the bishop as well. You could make arguments for both moves, really. Gonna put the queen on d3 just because it's a bit closer to the king that way. And I think with his plan g4 h5, the attack is probably just going to play itself for the most part. So now if, it's like a little trick I remember learning in a game in 2004 when I was reading like New South Wales Junior Chess League magazine. Where do you like gh5 go g5 just open up the king side? Quite a fun little idea. Although I don't think it actually works that well because he might have knight g4 to defend. So maybe, although actually in that case. I could probably still play that, actually. Actually, I'm just going to do it, because whatever. Because the idea is that after knight g4, take, take out bishop e5. And he doesn't have g6, because I have rook h8 mate in that case. So that's actually really good for me, I think. But yeah, he goes knight d5 instead. Uh, well, do I just take the pawn? I mean, I may as well just take the pawn, I think, and open up the file. It is a pawn sack, but I'm getting so much play for it. So... I can just bring all the piece in the attack, and I think he's not going to last that long. But it's already 6.32, and the fact he's, he's taking forever on the moves does tell me that, yeah, this is probably going to be the last win I get uh, in the one-hour time. So, yeah, what to do if they play really slow? There's not a lot I can do about it. Well, if he plays bishop f6, it's actually a really funny mate here, which I might get to show. Because it would have been like I have queen h7 and then bishop f7 mate, but he avoided it to his credit. So bishop f3, you know, I'll just go king e2, sack rook g1 is my plan, but he's probably going to not allow it. Maybe he'll avoid it by getting himself flagged, I don't know. Okay, knight e4, let's bring this in. Bring more pieces into the attack. It's all position, probably objectively, black is surviving, but I think practically it's not going to happen. And the already moves like knight g5 and try and queen h7 is one idea I have up my sleeve, and because I'm lazy, that's what I'm going to do. But the idea is if it takes, I have queen h8, queen g7, and then I take g5 and just crash through with the pieces. And he has not much time on the clock, and, well, he has to go f5 to defend. Which he's probably going to find because he's spending so much time on the move, but, yeah, it's still bad for him, I think. Well, after f5, it does kind of force my knight back or force rook g1. And even those are really ideal moves, this sort of position. So, uh, yeah. You know, when I think a long time, I keep worrying, like, did I connection drop out? That's why I keep thinking has happened when they take forever on a move, but usually it's not the case. So it takes, and I mean, this is going to be a forced mate, but he's going to get flagged first. I go queen g7, queen g8, queen f7, and, and that's it. And yeah, resigned for letting me play the final mate. And because he took forever and lost on time, it means that... Yeah, it means that uh, at 59 minutes, uh, there's no way I'm going to win a game in 30 seconds. So with that, if I check, want a rematch, no, you take too long to beat. In that case, yeah, that means, because like the last guy I played was this one, it means I got in 19 wins in the hour. Okay, that's actually a reasonable sort of number. It means I average like three minutes per win. 
I mean, normally like a good run would be averaging something like two and a half to two minutes, but you know, I guess I'll take it. Anyway, that was my Grandmaster speed run. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave a comment below with what your take was on the speed run. Was I play, playing really badly or were my opponents just playing really well? I'll see you guys in the next video. Get out of here.